Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. The press says the western U.S. is experiencing an epic drought, and it's the worst mega drought in 1,200 years. And they say that Biden's Inflation Reduction Act will make the drought less severe. That's what the press and Democratic politicians are saying. Now let's take a look at what's actually going on. The southwestern U.S. has been having an extremely wet summer, with stream flows far above normal. All of these black and blue dots in New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Arizona are either record high stream flows or near record high. And there's huge amounts of rain in the forecast over the next 10 days, as much as 6 inches in central Arizona. Unlike the current fake news, in the past the western U.S. has experienced actual mega droughts. A thousand years ago, the western U.S. experienced a very severe drought which lasted almost 200 years. And this happened again during the 12th and 13th centuries. By contrast, the 20th century was the wettest century of the past millennium. The 12th and 13th century droughts wiped out the Anasazi people. The Anasazi dominated the southwest for many hundreds of years, but the drought wiped them out towards the end of the 13th century. This graph shows wet periods and drought in New Mexico over the last 2,500 years. New Mexico cyclically varies between very wet periods and very dry periods. That's why it's a desert. The 1950s was one of the driest decades on record in New Mexico. That drought ended right before I was born in New Mexico. This was followed by the 1980s, which may have been the wettest decade. After the drought of the 1950s, the United States government decided they needed to build a huge reservoir to store water. In their infinite wisdom, the United States government decided to flood the most beautiful canyon on the Colorado River. This happened 60 years ago, but fortunately, photographer Elliot Porter captured wonderful images of the canyon before it was flooded. This is what Glen Canyon looked like before Glen Canyon Dam was built in order to fill it up and form Lake Powell. The destruction of Glen Canyon by the U.S. government 60 years ago was one of the greatest environmental crimes of all time. 60 years ago, the environmental movement was united in their opposition against dams and hydroelectric power. One of my favorite authors, Edward Abbey, made a career venting his anger about the destruction of Glen Canyon. For the past 60 years, there's been a great hope in the environmental movement that Glen Canyon will eventually be restored. But nature is taking care of itself. Lake Powell is drying up. Huge amounts of silts have been deposited at the bottom of the lake, which are now visible where the lake is drying. This is a recent photograph with this man holding a picture of the same place in the 1950s. It's been my dream for the past 60 years to see Lake Powell dry up, and that seems to be happening now. As I mentioned earlier, Lake Powell was built right at the end of the 1950s drought and shortly before the very wet decade of the 1980s. I'm going to change topics for a few minutes, and if you bear with me, you'll understand what the point is. During the very wet decade of the 1980s, I was teaching science at a school along Oak Creek in central Arizona. The school doesn't exist anymore, but I went back there on Christmas Day four years ago and took pictures with Toto and Rambo. When I was teaching there in the 1980s, I had a different dog, Dingo. Dingo was an amazing dog and did everything with me, including teaching school and coaching the soccer team. This is one of my favorite pictures of Dingo. The Semino twins were very famous because they were double mint gum twins. I talked to them a few years ago in Scottsdale, Arizona, and they told me something very gratifying. They told me that they remembered everything I taught them about science 30 years earlier. I can't take credit though, Dingo was always in the classroom with me and made for a very good learning atmosphere. In 1988, I took the students on a field trip up to see Glen Canyon Dam. The students made a very nice scrapbook for me using photographs which they took. After the wet 1980s, the water level in Lake Powell was very high. During the summer of 1989, I frequently drove up to Lake Powell on weekends to go cliff diving. The water was very deep and cold, and Dingo would get very upset every time I disappeared under the water. The building of Glen Canyon Dam completely changed the ecosystem of the Grand Canyon. Prior to the building of Glen Canyon Dam, the water flowing through the Grand Canyon was very warm and muddy. But now the water flowing through the Grand Canyon is clear and cold because it comes out of the bottom of the lake. 
This is satellite imagery of the massive Lake Powell. The lake is out in the middle of the desert where the water evaporates very quickly. Evaporation from Lake Powell loses about 6% of the annual stream flow of the Colorado River. Another huge loss of water from the Colorado River is caused by the Central Arizona Project Canal. This canal runs from the Colorado River for 300 miles through Arizona. The population of Arizona has increased more than 500% since the 1950s. The golf courses and lawns for millions of people in Phoenix require a lot of water. And besides the huge amount of Colorado River water being diverted to serve the city of Phoenix, huge amounts of water is lost by evaporation and seepage out of the bottom of the canal. Nearly 10 billion gallons of water per year is lost before it even gets to Phoenix. Like Arizona, Colorado has seen a massive increase in population over the last 60 years. Almost all of the population increase in Colorado has been on the east side of the Continental Divide. Like Phoenix, Denver is extracting huge amounts of Colorado River water. The Colorado River water being used by Denver and the Front Range is transported in tunnels like these ones through the mountains. The growing cities of Colorado, Arizona, and California are extracting huge amounts of water from the Colorado River which is causing the lakes to dry up. The lakes are drying up because people are using and wasting huge amounts of Colorado River water. But of course our fake news press blames it on climate change. The good news though is that Joe Biden and Barack Obama are going to save the lakes by increasing the deficit and increasing taxes. Toto on the other hand is looking forward to Lake Powell drying up so he can take the hike there which he's wanted to take for the last 60 years. You can visit Toto Kyrie Caesar Tokinupala on the web at realclimatescience.com.